So um, today we're going to be practicing some trailer loading. Um, he's always had a lot of issues with this and um, we actually have a show coming up in like two weeks here. Um, I'm actually going to show for my 30th birthday. What? <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to practice with him. It's been a couple of months, um, probably since like the end of September when we trailered last, which was actually when we moved to Missouri. So he's probably not super jazzed about getting in a trailer so thought it would be the perfect time to show you what I do with him and how I work with him on getting him in the trailer and having him not explode or get upset or angry um, so yeah so it's super cold here right now it just snowed um, over Christmas so like perfect time to do trailer practice <laughs> first things first is always make sure you have your supplies ready to go um, I've cleaned out my trailer um, shavings are kind of crazy but they will do. Um, there's, I got his um, rope halter in case we need it um, for extra sort of um, direction. It works a little better than his leather halter or nylon halter. Um, and I never put a chain or a rope on him or anything like that because um, he would freak out. Um, I have my carrot stick just in case he needs it. Um, again, it's not for like whipping or forcing him to go in the trailer, it's for um, directing him so that he steps up into the trailer. Um, it is a step up trailer. I have the divider clip back, um, that's how it always stays, so he has like the entire trailer to himself. I don't use any um, hay or treats when I'm practicing just because I also don't want him to get sort of used to thinking that he's going in the trailer for treats. And then the other most important thing about trailer practice is to always make sure you're fully hooked up and ready to go. So I have my hitch all hitched up, um, everything's attached, uh, electrics, emergency brakes, um, chains, everything. Um, it's removed the chocks from the wheels. So um, that's really important too because you want to, um, sometimes a trailer can tip once they get in and then that would obviously freak them out even more. So you don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna walk you through um, what I do with him um, so that you can have a better idea um, of what I'm actually doing here. So first I just really relax um, I just walk him up to the trailer. I don't ever force him to go in right away. I let him have a sniff around so that he can figure out what's going on. Um, and if he steps up, that's awesome, like he did here. Um, but this is what he tends to do. It's like he'll go in front and then he'll kind of just stand there with his back feet out. So I make sure that I'm the one to say back out and I get him to back up. As you can see here, that kind of upsets him because he doesn't like tension on his lead or being forced to do anything. Um, so I just gently ask him to walk forward simply. Um, he kind of freaks out a little bit, doesn't like that, puts his head up, gets upset, walks around. I position him back around again. And I like to always stand on the outside of the trailer so that I'm never trapped in there with him because there is no emergency door. He tests it out again, he has a little sniff, he can reach all the way to the front of the trailer because he's pretty big. Um, so I just kind of give him some pets and say, you know, good job for stepping in there. Then I say, you know what, like let's come out of there. So it really keeps his interest in going in the trailer and he thinks that he's doing the right thing by stepping up there and then now coming out again when I ask him to. So that way when we turn him back to it, he's not having made the decision that he wants to come out. I've asked him to leave. So then he steps in again, and this time he goes a little bit further. He inches further forward, and then he goes all the way in. And then I just let him hang out for a few minutes, give him a little pet on the butt, be like, good boy, good job. And then I ask him to come out again. So every time it's really relaxed, it's really simple, really basic. I'm just asking him for the most basic things, giving him lots of rewards and love and cuddles. There's no force used. We didn't even need the carrot stick this time. Um, and he'll just go in easily um, after that. But it's all about being really patient and making sure that you're walking them up to the trailer in a really relaxed fashion not forcing them to go in by using any kind of tools or whips or chains or 
I've seen people like loop lead ropes behind horses butts and things like that like I don't want any of that because if I need to load him I'm going to be loading him by myself and there might not even be anybody to close the gate for me so this is why I put this rope on the gate so that I can close it myself if there was an emergency and I needed to get him out of somewhere in a quick way. So I put this rope on here. That way I can swing the door closed because it's really heavy and I can't reach from the outside of the trailer to the door otherwise he might get out again. Um, he sometimes likes to turn around so as he did here so I just stopped and wait, waited on closing the door in his face. And then I pushed it open to show him like, hey, you know, you're not getting trapped in here. It will open back up again. Um, and he was fine with that. So then he'll go back in. And then I'll do it again. And this time I'll close it all the way up. I'm fine with him turning around too. If he wants to look out the back, that's totally fine. I really don't mind. In fact, it makes it easier for me to be able to close the gate. So then I'll close that up and then uh, then I will turn him back around in the trailer. What you can't see on the inside right now is I'll turn him around and then I clip him to the front. And you always, always, always want to make sure that your gate is closed before you clip the horse to the front um, because that acts as sort of like a barrier so they're not going to back out if they are clipped up to the front of the trailer. The worst case scenario is if the gates open at the back and then they pull back and freak out and then fly out the back of your trailer. That way he comes out in a nice sedate fashion after he's turned around again. He always likes to turn around and step down. Um, he doesn't like to back out of the trailer, um, but because it's a big trailer all to himself, that's totally fine and we work with what we have. Um, so then I just practice it again. And um, he's always been a little bit claustrophobic, I think, from his racing days. So it's always really good to practice this before you're actually wanting to leave or go somewhere. Ideally, I like to try to practice it at least every once or twice, once every once a month or every two months, just so that it stays fresh in his mind um, and he knows, like, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, if I don't do it that frequently, then he starts to be more hesitant about getting in. Um, but it's really about keeping it really simple and fun and happy. You don't want to ever get frustrated. If you feel like you're getting frustrated or upset, then you need to walk away and, you know, just stop and take a breather or have someone else try. Um, you also want to keep these training sessions pretty short. I like to try and keep them under 30 minutes so that you're not, you know, overloading their brain. Um, and they're not getting frustrated and upset. And as you can see here, he's really not bothered anymore about going in there, standing in there. He's pretty happy. He's just looking around. He's like, what's going on? This is a cool little house. So yeah, I hope this helped you guys. Um, and um, hopefully he'll be just as easy when we go to the show um, tomorrow, which is tomorrow now. Um, and yeah, I will vlog from the show.